let's get this thing started. If you guys do not know me, my name is Dave Rosenberger. Um, I am vice president here at Doble. I'm not here, I'm in my house. I'm vice president at Doble. Um, I'm also vice president in my house. Um, I'm certainly not the president there. Um, and uh, we are here today with Lagrand, uh, more specifically uh, Chief and Vadio. And uh, we're gonna be talking about a lot of the things that have been making our lives easier in this crazy world we live in today. So uh, I guess before we get really started, uh, I wanted to introduce to you guys, Brian Mungo, Mr. Mike Heinrich and Kevin Olson. Um, They're going to be uh, our subject matter experts today. I'm more so just a host. Um, think of me like, uh, Steve Harvey or Drew Carey or um, any other good host that is out there. I probably won't be as charismatic as them though. So um, I guess a little bit about Doble, if you are not familiar, I'm looking at the attendee list. I recognize just about every name. So uh, I won't get too crazy into my, into the Doble dog and pony, but uh, a couple quick housekeeping things. Uh, in about 15 days here, uh, we're coming up on our 50th anniversary, which is pretty exciting for us. So um, not a lot of other companies in this industry have been around that long. And uh, we're planning on celebrating um, in a big way all year long. So stay tuned for that. There's going to be a lot of fun content coming out. Um, I guess one of the big challenges that we've had um, over over this year is is keeping up with demand, right? So there has been a ton of demand in uh, with being able to adapt to remote learning, remote working, all of these things. And Legrand Chief and AV and Vadio have been uh, a big help in helping us fulfill that demand. Um, so a little bit about Legrand, if you guys don't know, um, it is a conglomerate of brands, or I guess Legrand AV more specifically is a conglomerate of brands, including Chief, Vadio, Daylight. Luxel and Middle Atlantic products, um, quite a powerhouse if you if you ask me, um, but nobody's asking me, but that's my opinion. Um, and so Doble and Chief's relationship goes back to the early 2000s. Um, we have always liked Chief because they design with the installer in mind, right? They make our jobs easier and safer. Uh, and they're always pushing the envelope in terms of things like, oh, I've always wanted it to do that way or work this way and didn't know how to make it happen. And uh, that is what I think Mike is going to be talking about a little bit today. Another thing that we really like that uh, specifically now in 2020 is uh, all the carts for uh, mobile Zoom rooms that Chief offers. Um, a lot, they've kind of combined with some of the middle Atlantic offerings too. I think that was a great, a great marriage because we like both of those lines, and I think they've been doing a great job blending those together. Uh, on the Vadio side of things, um, if you guys aren't familiar with Vadio, they've always been known for putting together a quality product whenever it comes to cameras. Um, and over the last four to five years, their USB offerings have been dramatically expanded and obviously in high demand over the last nine months. Uh, one product specifically that isn't obviously a camera that we love uh, is the AV bridge. I don't know, Kevin, if you're gonna be talking much about that, but that is something that I think is a necessity for everybody, um, especially in the world that we live in today. So um, without further ado, I guess I'm gonna hand it over to, to Mike and um, Mike's gonna share his screen. And I think that might be my, uh, my cue. to do my, the first poll. Now, full disclosure, I've never done a poll on Zoom. So if I mess this up, don't be surprised. So I'm gonna launch the first poll. Here's the first question. Oh, it has all four questions on it. All right, so just answer the first one. How about that? I messed it up. You guys some time to yeah, I'll, I'll leave it up there for, you know, about 30 seconds. Uh, if it takes more than 30 for our uh, people to 
read and respond, then, you know, that's okay. So, um, Mike is based out of St. Louis, Missouri. For those of you that are wondering, Brian is, well, what is the city, Brian? Are you outside of Akron or are you outside of Canton or is it the same thing? Not the same thing and uh, uh, closer to Akron. Yeah. Okay. And Kevin, uh, I don't actually know where you are. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, I'm just uh, on the northwest side of Minneapolis. Cool. Very cool. All right. Three very different climates. Great. All right. Thanks, all right. everyone. Oh, everyone's just plowing through all of them. I, I love it. Okay, great. I'm going to end the poll, and Mike is going to get rolling here. It looks like everyone has an average knowledge of the uh, of, of the chief offering, so that's great. Hopefully, Good. Good to know. I'm going to end the poll. Thanks, guys. Great. Thanks, David. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the history of Chief today, um, a few slides on that. Uh, I'm going to go into some product uh, product information, some new products that we have on our line uh, over the past year or so, including tiled uh, direct view LED mounts, uh, some impact kiosks, and then uh, some electric height adjust uh, carts that we uh, launched this year geared towards the K-12 market. And then uh, some accessories that we that we launched as well, and then finally with some healthcare protocol stands that we've been working really hard on over the past nine months, and uh, really going to fit into the to the needs that are out there right now. Um, as far as a history of Chief, if you don't know, Chief's been around for about forty years. Um, started off with a gentleman named Bob Brantley. Um, he was making. Uh, stands and, and mounts for 35 millimeter slide projectors in his garage. Um, so uh, that, that turned into uh, a wider expansion of our products. Um, 40 years of service and proven product excellence. Um, we respond to industry needs. We do a ton of empathy with customers and, and users um, to develop our products. A um, lot of time is taken to develop new products. It, it really, it really uh, runs the gamut of, of um, questions and needs and, and what's out there that's, that we're not hitting um, on how we develop our products. Um, you can find our products pretty much anywhere, offices, classrooms, homes, restaurants, government buildings, airport stadiums, pretty much anywhere that you see a display or a projector, um, we've got a mount for it. Um, Chief is built on quality, like David was saying. All of our products are, are thoroughly tested. You can see up in this top, top picture, uh, it's a tip test on one of our carts. Let me turn on a laser pointer here. Um, like I said, installer inspired, we talked to a lot of installers. How do we make our products easier for that installer to uh, get into a room, install our products, and get out on a, on a uh, pretty quick basis? Mike, I've uh, never seen one of those tip tests. That's Pretty cool. Yeah, this is in our, our uh, MOC. It's our main warehouse in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Um, so we do we do that tip testing on all of our carts. Um, and then you also see there's weights on the outside for on our, on our products as well. Very cool. Um, global reach, we do have uh, manufacturing uh, overseas, but we do have uh, global reach throughout the world. Um, we have warehouses. Uh, in the United States, in both uh, Minnesota and California. And then we also have uh, warehouses in France, um, in Wirt, France. Um, customer service is really important to Chief. Um, we, on our website, you can either call in to a customer care center or you can do live chat with, um, with our customer care team. Um, Chief has a large portfolio between mounts for displays, mounts for projectors, um, I'll talk a little bit about these kiosks today. Um, we're doing a lot of, of storage solutions as well. Um, like David was saying, we do partner with our friends at Middle Atlantic, and we've come up with a lot of storage solutions, in-wall, on-wall um, storage solutions. And then we also do uh, workstation products. Um, these are monitor arms or um, desks. We do a lot of commercial interiors, monitor arms. 
uh, in the commercial interiors channel. Um, supporting tools. Uh, one of our big supporting tools is Mount Finder. If you go to our website and type in the name of the display, make and model a display that you want to use or projector that you want to use, we will come up with the solutions that will fit that display, make and model. So whoever is updating that library for the model numbers on that is a saint because uh, we've got a couple of people that do that. Yep. I, I've never been stumped on that. And I probably use it close to a dozen times a week. Yep. Good. Hey, I might want to add too, when you're on the website and you're searching, you also can do keyword searches. If you're looking for something specific, you know, how to mount a shore microphone in the ceiling, type in that shore model number and you can search that way as well. Interesting. Cool. Um, let me talk about a little bit about direct view LED. Um, direct view LED tiles are, are new and upcoming um, in the industry right now. This is pretty much a replacement for your standard traditional video walls. On a standard traditional video wall, I'm sure you've seen those in the past. Um, they've been around for years, typically 55 inch displays that are sandwiched together to make a video wall. The problem with those traditional video walls is you have visible bezels. Um, with a direct view um, LED wall, you do not have those bezels. Um, the problem that we have come up with is that there are hundreds of manufacturers coming over from overseas and none of them have a universal mounting pattern um, like a display does, a, a visa pattern. So we've had to develop um, very specific mounts for, uh, for a make and model of a manufacturer. Um, so each time that we have a, uh, an integrator or a end user come to us and say, we want to use this particular direct view LED panel, we have to adapt our mounts to that. So what we did is we came up with a basic configuration of a frame, a framework. Our frameworks are modular, so you do not have to have that traditional um, four displays by three displays tall wall. Uh, you can do these modularly. They stack vertically and then work horizontally. So this is a, an example. These, this picture is an example of how you can work with these modular, modularly, hard to say. Um, but, but keep in mind that we do have to make sure that we make these for the right, for the make and model that, that you're requesting. So um, these are out on the market now. Um, these are becoming more popular just because of the, the clean lines and, and um, uh, longevity of the product. So um, if you do have a, a video wall that you're looking to do, take a look at these um, mounts for our direct view LED. All right. um, we're finding with the, the past few years, digital signage is huge. It's a, it's a total growing industry. It continues to grow. Um, we started to make these kiosks a couple of years ago. They've won a lot of uh, awards and in, in shows, products of the year. Um, we started with this one here. It's an on-wall um, portrait kiosk. Basically what that is, is a, is a framework that goes around a display. So if you've got a display between 40 and 75 inches, um, we have a, a kiosk for that or a frame for that. How it works is the display mounts inside the door frame and then that mounts on barrel hinges onto the back plane that mounts onto the wall. So super easy for service. Um, there is an expandable feature on the inside of this frame. Uh, it starts at three inches, so you can beat your ADA requirements, and it expands if you have a deeper display out to five inches. So this is the first one that we came up with a few years ago. We've expanded that line recently. Uh, the next one in our, in our offering was the floor, floor kiosk. Uh, you see these in malls and, and anywhere that somebody's doing wayfinding and directions. Um, we make these either in a single size, single sided version or a back to back um, mount to the floor, or we offer a floor base for those as well. Um, so those are all out now. Those are uh, 46 to 55 inch uh, select, 65 inch selection. So any of those displays in that size range, we have a kiosk for that. And then just recently, we did the uh, landscape version of the wall kiosk. Um, this is a little tougher because we couldn't really necessarily do a barrel hinge like we did on the portrait. We had to figure out how to do the, uh, the pullout on the, on the landscape version. 
what we did is we put a, a release tab on the top and then there's a scissor mechanism behind it so that you can pull that out to, to access the, your material behind it. So um, these are all shipping now and ready to roll. Um, they can be customized. Um, we do offer them in black or white. But they can be customized. We've had a lot of customers do wraps for these um, or custom color. So keep those in mind. Like a custom vinyl wrap or something like yep. that? Yep. Very cool. Hey, Mike, we do have a question. Um, are Chief products UL certified? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, all of our products, I, I showed you earlier on the slide about the tip test. All of our products go through um, UL certification um, for weight capacity and tip testing. Um, we, we do have to have those products uh, certified with the UL listing. So yes, they all are UL certified. Uh, moving on to carts. Uh, David talked about uh, distance learning and, and education. Both of my kids um, do part in, on campus and part distant learning. A um, lot of education are going to mobile carts. Um, so we brought this one out about a year ago. This is geared towards the K-12 market. It's an electric height adjust cart, um, either the cart version or the floor version of that same cart. Um, this is great for the distant learning um, K-12 market. You can add a camera to this so that you can do in-class as well as uh, distant learning. Um, it does come with an onboard remote with up, down, and three presets, um, optional wireless remote. And then there's also a dongle that's, that's an option that you can download a third-party app and control the height adjust of that display um, with an app on your phone. Um, this one has 26 inches of travel. So, you, so in a K-12 market, um, you can go from the kindergarten room all the way up to the high school basketball players. Um, I, I can't reach the top of the display when this is fully extended on a 70 inch display. So um, really nice range of travel on our carts. Tippy toes, Mike, tippy toes. I'm sorry, Brian? Yeah, on your tippy toes. Yeah, I need to. I'm not a, I'm not a tall dude. Uh, hey, Mike, Mike. Yeah. Are there options to add power strips, PCs, et cetera? There are, um, there are spaces for um, cables to run through those carts on the back side. There's three channels on the back. And typically what we've seen done is the power strip sits on the bottom. Um, we do offer those power strips through our middle Atlantic channel. Um, let's talk about some collaborative spaces. Um, we, we understand that through, uh, through this year that a lot of spaces are going to change. And we developed this uh, standalone floor stand for display. Um, how this works is it uh, leans, basically leans against the wall. It's mounted against the wall. It does have to be mounted in two spots. But what you do not have to do is move power, move signal um, on the wall, nor do you have to do any uh, wall remediation. We look at these as a, a solution for quick installations for conference rooms, small conference rooms. Um, the, the weight of the display is mounted on the, is held by the two uprights. And then there's a base cover over the, over the bottom. And the base cover is less than four inches. So it's low profile and beats that ADA requirement. And then you can store media players and that kind of thing underneath on the storage panel. This well, looks like a great solution for pounds. Power active learning as well um yeah there's for sure you could do a lot of you know separate pods uh, i know and it's specifically in the university setting there's a ton of old buildings where remediation is a problem right uh so that's a that's a really cool product um the other thing on this product is that um typically you're going to need to run a cable over to your conference table there's a cutout on the bottom down here. You can see it in the picture on the bottom here a little bit easier. Then you can use the overflow raceway from Middle Atlantic, to run those cables from that display over to your table. Um, these are some accessories that we came out with this year. Um, this are, these are pullouts so that you can access the material behind your display without having to take the display off the wall. Um, there's 11 and a half inches of extension on these scissors. 
so that you can get behind your display. Um, we started out with the, the two scissor version. This one uh, is for displays up to 150 pounds um, and it uh, mounts up with our Fusion series of mounts. Just recently we came out, we know that there's larger displays coming out on the market right now, 80 inches and above. So we had to make a larger pullout for those. We made this one into a three scissor, same features as the two, um, but holds up to 250 pound uh, displays um, that you can have access to behind if you need to. Hey, Mike, um, those are pretty cool. How much depth would that add? Oh, Brian, um, thanks for being quick, about an inch and a half. Cool, all right, never mind. There you go. Thanks, Brian. These are recent um, with the times that are going on. We've had these out for a few months now, Healthcare Protocol Tablet Stand Series, we call them. It's kind of a picture of the Visa mounted one. Um, so these do come in two varieties, either a tabletop stand or that floor stand. Um, we work with the, uh, the thermal mirror system. Um, so the thermal mirror system mounts to the stand and then it's got the, the thermal mirror has the camera on the top, gives the temperature sensing, that kind of thing. So um, we recently came up with those stands. Um, there's some accessories for that for the thermal mirror system. Like I said, thermal mirror sits on the top, either on the, on the desktop stand or on the, on the floor stand. Uh, there's a tablet stand on the, uh, that goes along with it. Um, so if you have somebody in a lobby of a building that needs to check in, they can check in here, they can hit the, they can get their temperature scanned, and then this is on the bottom here is a printer stand, um, and then they can get their badge printed or, or some sort of an acknowledgement that they, um, that they went through that protocol. Um, this is the Visa, Visa stand of the, the same caliber. Um, there are tablets that we have found from ELO, MIMO, Aurora, and Bluefin that do have integrated thermal sensing uh, capability and the software that goes with it um, that also have the 75 by 75 or 100 by 100 Visa mount pattern. So these are uh, all out on the market now. Um, it's a nice clean stand. There is a removable back to these uh, so that you, for cable management and that kind of thing, but um, once that's all put together, it's a nice clean look on a, on a temperature stand. I think that's it from the chief side, unless there's any other questions. I'll comment really quick on those stands. One of the nice things we're seeing is, is kind of dual use. If health protocol and, and temperature taking isn't a priority, we are seeing a lot of requests for those being used uh, for local uh, um, visual signage, wayfinding, things like that, small um, display holders essentially for room scheduling or informational displays for uh, even in, in car dealerships, information about the car you're looking at. So there's a lot of creative ways to use that product as well. That's my two cents. Was both of them? Both of, both of the cents? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm now completely tapped out, yeah. I'm going to take a nap. I'm exhausted. <laughs> cool. Uh, I guess we're going to hand it over to Kevin now. All right. Uh, let me get my screen shared here and we can go. Um, I do have uh, a lot of stuff to share here. So uh, I have the chat window open, the question window open. If you, if you have something, feel free to um, put a message in there and I can answer them for you. Um, like I said, I do have a lot, you know, of course that great introduction we got uh, with the glowing recommendation on AV Bridge. I figured I should probably talk about AV Bridge. So <laughs> while, while Mike was presenting, I threw a couple extra slides in. So uh, here we go, AV Bridge two by one. It, it's our newest, yeah, it's our newest AV Bridge. And for those that might not be familiar with our AV Bridge line of products, it's, it's really about getting that traditional video and audio into that USB or IP streaming world. So it's, you know, take all the AV gear in your room, run into this and we can get you to that USB world. Um, 
this one, you know, two by one kind of tells you what it is. It's, you know, we can take two, two inputs into it. So, you know, you can imagine two, two cameras in a room. It could be a camera and a computer, um, whatever you want. We can bring all the audio in, combine it all together and give you that USB connection to your computer to do your, you know, your Zoom call or if you're doing lecture capture with Panopto or whatever, you can do it all through there. And it does have a IP stream as well. So. Uh, if you need an RTSP stream or RTMP stream, um, this will do both. So kind of kind of gets all your your devices all combined up together and, and uh, usable for that, you know, like I said, that USB and IP world that's become so prevalent uh, these days. So good solution. Like I said, we we do have several other AV bridges. This is just one that's the newest that kind of does that two input switching for us. So pretty cool figured i had to talk about av bridges after that intro so we'll keep moving along this is uh is is our, our newest camera we have we call robo flip um this is an in ceiling camera uh, it is a ptz camera so the, you see from my little graphic it does go up into the ceiling with a nice clean finish and then when you take it out of standby it will rotate out uh, it does give you that ability to pan, tilt, and zoom all around the room. Um, pre pretty cool. It's a it's a real neat solution for um, some of those rooms that you know either they you know you're really looking to keep a nice aesthetic to the room where you want that camera hidden um, for privacy things. You know we've had you know obviously some government um, scenarios where they want to know they are, they're not on camera. We've had some higher education um, scenarios where. Um, they might be hosting like executive MBA classes where, you know, there's all these executive CEOs in a room talking about their business and trade secrets and whatnot, and they want uh, to make sure they're not on camera. So it is pretty, pretty cool solution. Like I said, it does go in the ceiling. So this box is, uh, or this can is up in the ceiling. It is HD base T. So um, for those that might not be familiar with HD base T, it's a it's a way that over a category cable we can you know extend power video control um, 100 meters. So that way you don't have to worry about an electrician. Um, you don't have to worry about extending your HDMI. You don't have to worry about running a bunch of cables. It is just that one single cable um, to get you there. Um, and I do have. Um, one of my coworkers that's in Minnetonka, if Scott, you want to turn your camera on, um, he's got it there that he can show you. It's Scott's there. If he can hear me, maybe he stepped away. Um, well, it, oh, here he comes on. So if, you, if everybody can see in his video there, that is the camera up in the ceiling and you can take it out of standby and and looks like we're seeing on the back side of it if you can rotate it around and we can see what it what it does and how it moves oh, yep yeah, so there he's got it in the room that's the camera that he's moving around we have it above a podium that can be used you know kind of multi-purpose as a document camera and move, move around the room so like I said, it is pretty pretty unique solution. It's uh, I can't. Uh, there's nothing like it on the market, so it's kind of cool. It is very cool. So, all right, I can keep moving along here. Yeah, um, used as a document camera too, and just fire straight down. Correct. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So that can rotate. You know. Oh, it's 30x. Okay. Jeez. Yep. 30x zoom. So you see Scott's uh, rotating around where, uh, like I said, we do have a, a lectern in the front of that room that he can, you know, basically shoot it straight down. Great. So like I said, you know, we, we think, you know, if you think of some of these larger, I'll say training rooms or classrooms, you know, it could be used, you know, in a scenario like that as a, as a document camera on the lectern and then rotate back out to um, have like a student shot or whatever if you want to be able to capture students as well. Um, so you could use it as a multi-purpose camera. And I'm sure in true video fashion, you can program presets for like a wide shot of the audience, back to document camera or whatever. So if I select 
document camera on the touch panel as a source, the camera would just wink, go down or could if it's programmed correctly. Yeah, uh, so, you know, basically the guts inside of this is a RoboShot camera. So it is, you know, the yeah. like the RoboShot 30 camera we have, it is the same image sensor and optics and all that that's in that camera. Um, so, you know, you can save 16 presets on it. You can recall any of those presets. You can, you know, nice. do any individual pan tilt zoom as well. So, uh, like I said, it does give a vibration goes. Are you guys seeing any uh, difficulties with that? I know in the past when we've done a ceiling mounted document camera, you really have to be cognizant of vibrations in the ceiling and that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, with with cameras, the vibration is um, can be a concern. Of course, if you have to zoom in to two x, it's less of a concern than if yeah. you have to zoom in thirty x, because um, you're really any of that vibration you're multiplying by by thirty times. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Hey, hey Kev, is that the thirty x zoom? That's that's all optical, right? Is any of that digital? Um, I got to think Scott Ross would like to answer this question live. Scott, if you want to talk, go ahead and talk. Um, there, there is, there is some digital to it. It is 20 X optical. And then there's some digital to make it to 30 X. It is, I'll say, I'll say it's a lossless digital. So, you know, you, you're not really losing any of that resolution. But we've got at least 20 is is straight optical just in the glass. That's that's good. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Correct. Yep. Kurt, does that answer your question, hopefully? Yeah. So <laughs> got it. Cool. All right. Thanks, so like I said, it is the same as our RoboShot 30 Elite camera. It's the same optics and image sensor in that one. So cool. keep moving along. Um, Easy IP is a new, I'll say it's a family of products that um, we introduced, uh, you know, close to the beginning of the year here, I think it was maybe February, we've added some new products to it. So, you know, some of you might have seen it or heard about it. Um, this summer, when, when a lot of schools were looking to put in systems in the classrooms to get ready for for, for class, for distance learning, um, this, this quickly became a very popular solution, um, partially just because of the, the flexibility of what it does, um, you know, cost, ease of install. It's a, it's a quick, easy install too. So um, what we're really doing is taking some of these um, multi-camera rooms and really doing it all over a network. So, you know, if, if you think of a room um, using a network switch, we, we can attach four cameras to it. Um, we have a couple of boxes we can, you call one a decoder and one is a mixer that do kind of a couple different things I can talk about in a minute. But, you know, if you think about it, we're doing um, all the virtual switching over that network. So, um, you know, you don't have to worry about a video switcher. You don't have to worry about USB switching. I can have a classroom where maybe I have a, a, a presenter camera and a student camera, and I can really switch to it, switch cameras by just pointing to a different IP address. Really, it's just, you know, you're taking it and switching IP addresses. We do a fade to black and we decode the new IP address. So I'm actually using this system here in my office. So I can show you, you know, I uh, do have a, a couple of different cameras that, you know, I'm really just virtually switching. I'm just telling it to point to a new IP address. It switches to that new IP address, um, decodes it and is uh, pretty good. Yeah, it's a nice touch. It makes it seem almost seamless switcher esque, even though yeah. it's not even close to what that is. That's awesome. Yeah. I always refer to this as my student uh, camera. I have some Legos my son and I put together, and you know, back to my presenter. So, you know, if you're doing these things where you're trying to do a a class or a you know large you know meeting room you know corporate training room you know some of these bigger spaces um, it, it's a really flexible way of doing it. Um, cool. So like I said, we real quick, Kevin. Uh, um, I guess because the poll was a little bit uh, interesting. Uh, one the one thing that the poll said when the question number three said when evaluating video conference solutions, what's the most important? One hundred percent of the participants said easy to use. 
So uh, okay, that's that's I, I would agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I've I've always said, you know, Vadio, our kind of tagline is is, you know, I know Chief is installer inspired. Mm -hmm. You know, we always say we're the art of easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we 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 think about, you know, easy uh, for for somebody to install, easy for somebody to use. I always I always think, you know, is is John from accounting going to be able to use it? So. Um, you know, so we, we did introduce quite a few products uh, to this family over the year. Um, so we do have two cameras as part of it now. Um, we have our Easy IP 10 camera, which, you know, let's just say for, for Vadio, anytime we have a number in the, in the product name, that's the, the zoom capability of that camera. Um, so that is a, a 10X zoom camera. Um, we also have an Easy IP 20 camera, which is a 20X zoom camera, which is pretty cool. Um, then I said so we have two different interface boxes. We have one we call the decoder and one that's called the mixer. So I'll say the decoder is for some, you know, maybe smaller, more basic rooms. Um, it does have two inputs for our microphone. So either our table microphone or our ceiling microphone gives an audio output. Um, so it allows you some kind of, you know, basic switching of the cameras and, and I'll say a simple audio setup. Um, and if you get a more complex room, um, we have this Easy IP mixer, which um, really the biggest portion of that is it expands on the audio of that system. Um, so it does have Dante, Dante audio built in, so we can do um, Dante speakers and microphones onto it. It does have an analog input, so you can bring a you know third party um, you know room audio system uh, if if you have that in place already. Um, we have contact closure triggering in it. So if you want to do some of those um, automation things in a room, if you want to do um, some step mats in the front of the room, if you want to do some IR sensors, um, we can we can do that to create that automation. So, you know, I would say that for this, you know, higher education corporate training rooms is kind of like the perfect example for these. A lot of times, you know, the, those rooms are the same and they have a lectern on one side of the room and there's your projection screen in the middle and a, a whiteboard or, or a chalkboard on the, the other side of the room. And we can put a contact closure mat behind that lectern so that when someone stands on that lectern, it'll trigger a preset of that location. Um, same thing with the whiteboard. If we can put an IR sensor in the ceiling, when someone walks under that IR sensor, it'll trigger it and, and uh, give a preset of that whiteboard. Um, so it gives some of that automation, you know, I would say, especially professors, you know, they, they want, they want to do what they're experts at. And that's, you know, te teach kids about whatever their, you know, chosen field is. Um, they don't want to worry about video. And, and this would be at least give them some, some automation where, you know, if they're at a podium, it's a tight shot. If they're at the whiteboard, it's a tight shot. And if they're not on either one of them, it gives them just a wide shot of the room. Um, so you can create some of that automation that, makes it feel like a video production without having to do video production. So it's pretty cool. And of course, you know, that comes down to the, the ease of use part of it too. Um, we, we did introduce another uh, device too. It's called this Vadio device controller. You can kind of see it um, here. Um, it is a, a touch panel that can control the system. So I'll say for, for maybe some of those simple rooms where you're not doing a control system, this could be a good option to um, give some of those features that you would get in a control system, um, but just for the Vadio product. So I, I say that because this, this will only control our product. It won't control displays or projectors or shades or, or anything else um, in that room you might wanna control. But if you're looking for just something simple to recall some presets, whatnot, it is a, a POE plus powered device that you can just have on a table or a podium um, and be able to do some of that preset stuff. Makes sense. If there's any questions, I know I'm kind of covering a lot of stuff quick. Um, if there's questions, throw them in or, or I can slow down and recover something. Keep on going, man. Yeah, but yeah, so, this was a really popular product for us. Over yeah, higher education. I, can, I can see why. Yeah, it was, you know, like I said, we launched it in February and it's probably the, the, the quickest a product has really uh, taken off for us. So it was uh, surprising for us. So, so here's a couple of products we got coming out. So this is kind of maybe a little bit of a teaser for you. These are some products we're in development for, um, you know, 
probably be the end of Q1 here. So, so maybe March timeframe, if you're, if you're looking and we, we really think of these as maybe some, some corporate, you know, return to work, you know, traditional conference room products um, are some new ones we're doing. So these are both uh, EPTZ cameras, what we call, so electronic pan tilt zoom cameras. So it is a, a 4K image sensor and the camera wouldn't move, but your, your window would move inside of that 4K image, if, if that makes sense to everybody. So um, we would be able to make it appear like the camera was moving around without actually moving it around. So um, they are both pretty cool. They're gonna be obviously, you know, for that USB conferencing space, um, we will have HDMI outputs. Um, this one might be in particular for that HDMI, it does have a 30X zoom in it. So um, again, for those larger rooms um, can do it. Um, this one too, cool cool part of this is we are doing some, some AI into this. So be able to do some auto framing as well. So if you have those rooms that again, you wanna, you wanna make it easy and people can you know, walk into a room and it will automatically size your image to fit the people that are in the room. So if one person's in the room, it'll frame that one person. If there's three people in the room, it'll frame those three people. Um, so it is pretty cool. One thing unique about how we're doing it is there is going to be some, some configuration into that AI. So it's not just here's your AI and it works the way it works and you're stuck with it. Um, you're going to be able to mask off areas of the room. So, you know, if there's a, I don't know, overflow seating where you just want to ignore that area, you can ignore it. Or if there's windows in the background and you want to ignore that area, you can ignore it. If there's a, if there's a painting on the wall that tricks the AI, you can have it ignore that um, area as well. So, um, so uh, as far as the AI goes, obviously that's a term that's being thrown around a lot uh, nowadays. Is that something that's going to be updated? um uh, with firmwares potentially or uh can there do can it do people counting right so if i in the world of covid uh, if i have a conference room that normally holds 16 but now we can only hold four uh and can i can the camera recognize okay there's five six seven people in here uh and then maybe send uh some kind of a string to a control system that says that then you know, I'm, this is pie in the sky stuff, but then sends a notification to an administrator somewhere in the building that can go down and crack the whip, so to speak. Um, that's yeah, you, you know, it, it's definitely um, things that are capable. Like like all of our stuff, we'll we'll constantly do firmware updates that will mm -hmm. uh, you know Im improve upon it. At, at launch, um, that won't be a feature, um, but it is definitely something. Um, you may talk about a lot of stuff that's way into the future, which I don't necessarily like to do, but yeah, that's yeah. something that, you know, there's, there's talks about that people counting. Um, there's talks about um, some, I'll say some voice recognition command stuff that you can do as well. So there's a lot of stuff we can do with it. Um, just a matter of getting to it and, and making sure it's, it can be done right. So yeah, at first it'll be just that, that auto framing and EPTZ function. So like I said, we know not everybody is gonna want that auto framing. They might want to be able to just do like preset recall um, and not have it do that framing, but. Oh, yeah, the framing. So, yeah, so this is, like I said, this is the, the first one. Um, and then there's another one that's a smaller, the images are kind of hard to tell. This is a significantly smaller um, product than, than that previous one. Um, this one is, it's only 5X digital. So it's kind of that same, same type of camera, but really just for those kind of small rooms and what, what we used to call huddle spaces, which I think are probably just personal offices now. Um, so um, this would be smaller, like I said, 120 degree field of view. So um, pretty, pretty cool camera for us. Any questions on that, uh, on those products? I, I do have uh, one other I'll say tool to share, but in terms of products, was there any questions? I don't know. I didn't see anything come in through chat. No. Okay. One other thing to share. So 
Um, th this is this isn't a product. We t we talk about it like a product, um, but it's it's really just a, a free software download for anybody that you know might find it useful. Um, so this is what we call Vadio Deployment Tool. Like I said, it is a free software tool that you can you know, download from the website. Um, kind of can help you maintain and manage. You know, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of customers that you know you. You call up Doble and they 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 do all your install and you know maybe they do the maintenance and they can use this to do maintenance. But if you're doing day to day stuff, this might be helpful for you to do that day to day stuff um, once it's already been installed. So it is like I said, really a, a, a network based tool to manage your devices across the network. Uh, this is just stuff I have hooked up in my office here today. Um, it does have a search tool, so. Uh, you can do a sim simple scan, which will scan the entire subnet you're on. Um, you can do an advanced subnet where you can type in, you know, a specific IP address, a range of IP addresses, you know, kind of give you some more advanced scans. So um, we can scan my network here. And like I said, it'll just real time. I'm scanning my house and it finds all these devices I have um, hooked up currently in my home office. So kind of cool. Like I said, this main dashboard gives you some information. Like I said, it tells you what your, what your uh, product is, can give you some connection status um, information. If you've named the location of that product, it will tell you, you know, I'm just university of anywhere room one, two, three, you know, so it gives you an easy way to look and identify these. We try to call out which ones don't have current firmware. So, you know, it, it's kind of visually can tell you gives you some statuses that you can toggle through um, some more some more features. So there is uh, quite a few other control functions here that you can do quickly. So kind of if you're just doing it real quick, um, you can do any one of these. And, and to add, you can do any one of these to as many devices as you check here. So I can check these two cameras here. And if I wanted to, I could go do install latest firmware. You know, two two cameras. Maybe that saves you a little time. If you have you know fifty cameras, it would save you a lot of time. Um, and really, any any of these functions you can do across multiple devices at the same time. If you wanted to reboot every camera on campus at eight a.m., you could do it. Um, if you wanted to mute everything or disable standby, you could do that. Um, so kind of a, a a cool way to to manage everything. Um, of course, if you click in here, it can give you more information. It can give you, you know, your MAC address, um, different info. Again, you know, we'll list firmware here. Uh, we'll we'll show every firmware we've ever had available for the product. So, you know, we always think about going forward in firmware, but sometimes it's nice to go backward in firmware too. So um, we list everything on here, and you can, you know, choose the firmware uh, you need for it. Uh, one other cool thing this, you know, for, for you is, is kind of cool. We do have those groups where you can group products. So, you know, like I said, from that main dashboard, it shows you every product that I scanned across my network, and then I can group those into different groups. So you can see, I, I named them home office and this, you know, shows everything that's in my home office. Um, again, I, I named one easy IP 10, which to give you an example of, if you know you have a certain product you want to do a firmware update on, you can look in that group of products. You check the box; it'll select all of them, and you can do a firmware update on all of them, which is nice. Um, you know, I, I did a kind of a building one, building two. You know, some some customers might like to be able to, you know, sort group products by which building, uh, which classroom, which floor. Um, just a bunch of different ways to kind of group and sort things so hopefully it may, makes sense like i said it is a, a free download on our website uh, it's available um, I, I think we have a list a listing for a download of this on on every single video page on the website so there's a link all over the place so i'd love to hear maybe if everybody can put in the chat if this is something that uh, you know your organization would would think is useful are we on the right track is there is there other features you would like to see 
Um, I will say one thing we're, we're looking to add in the future is, is scheduling on this. So, um, you know, that ins install the firmware uh, is great. It'd be great to be able to schedule it to do it at two o'clock in the morning. Um, so you don't have to actually be there to do it. Um, so that's some of the things we're, we're looking at. Any other questions for me with audio? I think that's kind of what I had here to share. Anytime you have a remote management software that's, you know, well thought through like this one, I mean, it's, it's helpful. I mean, sure, um, there's people out there that just like to set and forget, but I know a lot more that like to tinker. Uh, and this is, uh, this is a nice platform to be able to manage and tinker. Yeah, I see Bob asked a question about multiple subnets and it, it will scan across multiple subnets. If in this advanced scan, you can type them in there. Um, the, the simple scan, if you're connected to two subnets, if your computer is connected to two subnets, it will scan both of them as well. Uh, but, you know, I, I think most people, you know, I know a lot of the AV networks are a, a certain set of IP addresses and it's, it's probably better to just scan, um, you know, a range of IP addresses in this advanced uh, field. You know, I know how IT groups sometimes get mad when you scan the entire network. I, I'm okay doing it here in my office because I am the IT group here at the home office. So, um, but yeah, it's a good question. Like I said, it's a, it's a good tool to kind of just day-to-day -day management. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you everyone. And uh, I guess if you do have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to myself or any of us. I guess I should have had something up here with our contact information. I'll follow up uh, afterwards. Um, this was being recorded, so if you, uh, it'll be you'll see it on our social media platforms and other. Um, and uh, you'll probably be hearing from Leah with uh, some Q and A's and everything else.